In my battery degradation video, I mentioned that I'd calculated that if I can drive 200,000 miles in my Tesla, it would be basically free. But that calculation was done a long time ago, and it was only ever a very uh, quick bit of math. So I thought we'd have another look at it and see if it really is going to be a free car for me at 200,000 miles. And honestly, I have no idea, but free? Your guess is as good as mine. Once they get home, we'll do the calculations and find out. There we go. 356 miles total. 91 odd kilowatt hours. So that means my entire trip up to Derbyshire via my parents' house has cost around 12 pounds of electricity for 350 odd miles. And that's not even the best bit. The best bit is out of that 12 pounds worth of electricity, I personally have had to pay for about two and a half pounds. Maybe the car will be free by the time I hit 200,000 miles. I think it's time to go inside and find out for sure. Why couldn't the weather have been like this yesterday? Oh, I'm all excited. I like free cars. Fingers crossed. First, a few quick caveats. This is going to be for me personally and I am going to play loose and fast with the general rules of mathematics and accounting. Let's do this. I'm going to compare this to a sort of a reasonably average MPG vehicle. So I'm going to compare it to a 45 mpg car which works out at about 14p a mile if you assume £1.40 per litre of fuel which as an average for the next 10 years that sounds perfectly reasonable to me and then you've got the Tesla. I will do 3 miles to a kilowatt hour and a kilowatt hour costs me one, uh, 13 pence so therefore you're talking about just over 4p per mile. Now the reality is I don't actually put, I don't pay for all the electricity that goes into my Tesla. I would say I probably pay for about half of it. So that's actually 2p. Because when I go on long journeys it's all free. By and large I only did 350 odd miles yesterday and it cost me like £1.50. Uh, but then when I'm at home going to sort of local shops and stuff then I have to pay. So there we go which is going to mean £4,000. So here the fuel costs are £28,000. Then you've got road tax, 1000 Here, road tax, road tax, fuel. Right, then at least three times a year I'm going to go on a journey where I would probably spend 100 quid on a plane ticket or a train ticket which are very expensive in this country whereas instead what I tend to do is the car which you know I'm not even going to bother putting the price in it's going to be too low to think about so over here I'm spending 300 pounds uh, every year so for 10 years I'm assuming 20,000 miles a year odd which is sort of maybe a bit lower than what I actually do, but there we go. So £3,000 there on that. We've also got the, um, uh, what have we got here? Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to call this UK travel. And then you've got family travel. At least once every 
uh, two years, we'll go on a family holiday and we will drive instead of flying. The average plane ticket price, let's call that 500 quid. So it'd be 1500 quid versus pretty much zero. So every other year, five times that, so that gives you 4,500 over here. And then we've got um, maintenance costs. Now, I would say after 100,000 miles, this one's gonna be costing you at least 1,500 a year, I would say. I'm sure there are much cheaper ways of getting an old car repaired, but I'm not going to be using those much cheaper ways because I just know from my past experience I won't. The electric car, let's call that 500. And over here, we're going to have 1500 times 5, so... Yep, I think that's about it. Okay, right, now let's just add these up quickly. Oh. Six thousand five hundred over there, and over here we've got forty-four thousand, and here we've got six and a half. Now let's add in the purchase price of these cars. And I bought my car for sixty-five, and I bought it through a business, so my my own limited business. So effectively, it is a uh, it's coming out of pre-tax business earnings, therefore. I'm going to knock basically a third off what I paid for it in tax that I don't have to pay. So that'll bring that down to 43,000. And you've got your six and a half there. So 49 and a half. And over here, We've got, I would need to buy a five and a half thousand pound car or less. Otherwise I'd be better off buying the Tesla. That's my idea of good value for money. Mm. Yep, that's more or less how I worked out the maths last time for my own personal circumstances. I mean, admittedly, I do look for ways to try and save back the cost of the car where I can but um, it's so cheap to drive around it's actually quite easy to find ways I hope you've all found this to be interesting and illuminating and like I said this is just for my own personal situation it's it's different for everyone and different you know different if you're in different countries and you know God only knows what the fuel price will be in six months let alone you know six years so I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. <music> Petrol and diesel cars require, you know, at least 1,500 pounds worth of repair on an annual basis after the first 100,000 miles. You know, I mean, you've got the brake discs going, the brake pads need changing constantly, the uh, exhaust falls off and needs replacing. That happens on an old car, that seems to happen once every couple of years.